Hola, my name is Pamela. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna talk about the equations you see are to know the volumetric flow rate and the mass flow rate of a compressible fluid, such as gases and water vapor. In the case that the density is calculated from the density in normal conditions, these formulas also apply to gases that follow the perfect gas law. However, in practice, this law is not so true when operating pressures exceed 10 bars and much less when gases are approaching critical conditions. This is where the density of the gas begins to depend on the critical temperature and pressure. The deviations are represented by the compressibility coefficient C, which is the relationship between the density considering the ideal gas and the real density. In these graphs, the value of C can be determined directly, this being one way to get it. The other way it's using the reduced equation of state of gases. Cr, Pr, and Br, which are the quotients between the quantity in question and the critical quantity. Where C is the coefficient of compressibility that corrects the density of the gas, this is determined with a table that gives the critical constants of the gases and with the compressibility coefficient curves. When gas carries water vapor without containing water particles, it is no longer pure and is considered wet, which must be considered when calculating, and it is here where the density of the wet gas deviates from the corresponding dry gas according to the following formula. The addition of steam to a certain amount of dry gas influences the flow rate corresponding to a given differential pressure in two ways. 1. The density of wet gas changes relative to that of dry gas. 2. The measured gas is only a part of the mixture that passes through the element. Hence, the correction factor N for wet gas is determined with this formula, which is represented in the following image as a function of the gas saturation, or dew point and its specific weight. To read the graph, we follow three steps. The first is that from the dew point on the upper scale, the vapor pressure W is determined by the corresponding pressure line. The second step is to get B with the formula I showed earlier. And the last step is to read the factor N on the lower scale using the specific gravity curves with B on the right vertical scale. There are times when the fluid flow is pulsating due to the action of piston bombs, compressors, fans, etc. Therefore, we must dampen it, for which the dampening devices that the measuring instruments have are used. The signal obtained is the average of the effective differential pressure, which is known by this formula. However, the actual average flow rate that the instrument will read if it could work without damping will be that of this formula. The QM minus QM error is always positive depending on the type of pulsation and the damping system. So to reduce it, we must increase the pressure drop or the volume between the machine that generates pulsations and the flow measurement point. When we select the differential pressure that the measuring element will produce for the maximum flow rate of the fluid set in the calculation, we must consider the line pressure and the maximum drop of the element, because both factors influence the operating cost of the installation. Nearly constant accuracy throughout the differential pressure measurement range is something to look for. It depends on the relationship of the diameters and the location of the element in the pipeline along with the straight sections and accessories that are upstream and downstream of the element. In this table, we can see the relationship between the maximum differential pressure that the element can admit with the static pressure in the line and with the graphs of strike pipe lengths and pressure drops. Normally, the flow measurement of liquids are a differential pressure of 2,500 mm water column or 100 water column. Differential pressure elements, on the other hand, require a strike pipe runs before and after it. In this table, we can see the general rules where the relation of diameters and distances expressed in pipe diameters are indicated. In general, the section of a strike pipe upstream is from 16 to 44 diameters and downstream from 2.5 to 5. Differential pressure elements absorb a pressure drop that depends on the diameter ratio and is a fraction of the differential pressure that the element creates. In this image, we can see the percentage of differential pressure absorbed and we can see that, ordering from highest to lowest due to pressure loss, we have the orifice play first. 
then the nozzle and the last one is the battery too. And well, this will be all for today's video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. I upload videos every Wednesday in Spanish and every Friday in English. Adios! The question... 205,000 millimeters water column. Eh? 2,500, no? Differential pressure. And with the graphs of sterile... Ordering from... Ordering from... Ordering... Ordering...